Hello everybody, my name is Mirvat al Asnaj. I'm an interventional cardiologist practicing in Jeddah, Saudi Arabia, and I'm here with Radcliffe Cardiology to present to you three of the most important trials in the interventional space that were presented at the European Society of Cardiology Congress 2022. I'm going to start with one of the uh, most interesting trials, which was the revived BIX trial and caused quite a stir when it was presented during the Congress. Now this was a trial that enrolled 700 patients with impaired LV function, severely impaired LV function defined by an ejection fraction of equal to or less than 35% with extensive coronary artery disease based on the uh, BIX Jeopardy score. Viability was assessed in these patients and it was demonstrated, it needed to be demonstrated in four segments and uh, the majority of whom were uh, detected by MRI, cardiac MRI. There were several exclusion criteria which are important. Patients who had an acute myocardial infarction within the last four weeks, decompensated heart failure and sustained ventricular tachycardia were all exclusions and there was a one-to-one -one randomization to uh, PCI with optimal medical therapy or optimal medical therapy alone. The mean age was 70, 88% were men, and the mean ejection fraction was 28%. The primary endpoint was a composite of all-cause death and heart failure hospitalizations, and the secondary endpoints were ejection fraction improvement at six months and 12 months, as well as improvement in quality of life parameters. So the results were surprising that just over the three years of uh, follow-up of this trial, 37 point, the primary composite endpoint of death and um, hospitalizations for heart failure occurred in 37.2% of the PCI arm and 38% of the optimal medical therapy arm. There was really no difference in the ejection fraction. With regards to quality of life at 6 months and 12 months, there was a notable improvement in the PCI arm which was not sustained uh, through 24 months. So overall this was considered a neutral study. The next study was the uh, radial trial which looked at individual patient level meta-analysis and it was assessing the impact of transradial access versus transfemoral access on both major bleeding and mortality. This was a pooled data from seven trials with over 21,000, uh, actually 21,600 patients. The mean age was 63.9%, women were 31.9% of the cohort, 95% had an acute coronary syndrome and 75.2% underwent percutaneous coronary revascularization. The primary endpoint was all-cause mortality at 30 days and it occurred in 1.6% of the radial arm versus 2.1% of the femoral arm and the co-primary outcome of major bleeding occurred in 1.5% of the radial arm and 2.7% uh, of the transfemoral arm. And when they looked at subgroups such as acute coronary syndrome, PCI pro protocol as treated uh, cohorts all had a survival benefit with transradial access. And this was consistent in different subgroup analyses such as angina and women as well. So this was very favorable uh, looking at contemporary data on transradial access and supports the current guidelines both European uh, and American. So the final study that I wanted to discuss with you uh, is the FRAME AMI study. This was an investigator-initiated open-label trial that included 14 sites in Korea. FRAME AMI randomized patients with multivessel disease who had an acute myocardial infarction uh, and successful PCI of the infarct-related artery to FFR-guided complete revascularization, i.e. FFR-guided revascularization of the non-infarct-related artery and angina-guided uh, of the non-infarct uh, related artery. FFR uh, significance was considered anything equal to or less than 0.8 and angina and angio guided was anything more than 50%. In the, uh, the PCI was done either in the index procedure which was highly recommended or at least index admission but they did permit uh, staged interventions. The primary endpoint was a composite of all-cause death, myocardial infarction, repeat revascularization. So a total of 562 patients were included. Um, the age was, mean average age was 63, 16% uh, were women. And um, immediate complete revascularization was done in 60% and it was achieved in 40% for uh, staged intervention. 
the follow-up was 3.5 years, and uh, the composite endpoint of all-cause death amine repeat revascularization occurred in 7.4% of those who got FFR guidance and 19.7% of those who got angioguidance only, and it was statistically significant. Looking at the individual components of the composite, when we look at death, it occurred in 2.1% of the FFR guided group and 8.5% of the angio guided group, again statistically significant. Myocardial infarction occurred in 2.5% of the FFR guided and 8.9% in the uh, angio guided alone. Again, this was statistically significant. And finally, unplanned revascularization occurred in 4.3% in the FFR guided and 9.0% in those who were angio guided. But this was not statistically significant. So overall, FFR guidance was consistent for both STEMI and non-STEMI patients uh, in terms of com guiding complete revascularization. Will this prompt uh, a change in the guidelines, perhaps too soon, particularly because it is uh, focused in Korea and needs to be replicated elsewhere? So thank you very much for staying tuned. Other trials that I did not discuss at depth but are actually very interesting and, and were presented at ESC Congress looked at uh, atherosclerosis uh, detected by PET and predicting outcomes in terms of mortality and repeat cardiovascular events. And the second studies that, that were presented looked at anti-thrombotic uh, agent, direct anti-thrombotic agents for patients with acute myocardial infarctions or stroke on top of intensive antiplatelet therapies such as Prasugril and uh, Ticagrelor. Remember, these were safety uh, trials designed for safety endpoints and did not have the numbers, the adequate numbers, to power them to give us uh, cardiovascular outcomes. Nevertheless, they lay the foundation to prepare phase three trials uh, for these agents in these subgroups. So thank you and hope to see you again in another episode.